Welcome to our tutorial on the 8085 stack operation instructions. Okay, so here we're going to give you some instructions that uh, you know uh, are mainly used when working with stacks. Okay, so let's just start with the push instruction. Okay, now as you can see, the push instruction has uh, as its operand a specified register pair. So it, it can be uh, you know anyone. Okay, it can be either the BC register pair. Okay, either the DE or the HL register pair, any one of them. Okay, now what this uh, push instruction what basically does is that uh, it just stores the data on a register pair. Okay, the data that is present in a register pair on the stack. And now we know that let's just take uh, uh, you know the BC register pair and uh, you know demonstrate an example over here. Okay, so let's say we have the uh, uh, data. I mean, um, okay. Now since we're talking about uh, the BC register pair over here, so you should always keep in mind that this data well actually means a 16-bit data because we're dealing with register pairs, okay, not a single register. So if we just take the BC register pair over here, let's say that it has the 16-bit uh, uh, data of um, okay 2F03, okay, and uh, now we want to store this 16-bit data in the BC register pair onto the stack. Okay. Now let's just uh, also, uh, you know, uh, make this assumption that we've just let's say we've just uh, declared this stack at the memory location. Uh, uh, let's say yeah, three triple F H. Okay. So this is where uh, we have just declared the memory location. Uh, I mean, declared the beginning of the stack. So this is actually uh, start of stack. Okay. So this is actually the start of stack memory. Okay, and now we know that whenever uh, we start, no, whenever we just, just want to store the data, okay, the storage of the data will begins at a memory location that is one less than the start of the stack memory. Okay, so obviously the memory location that is 3FFE would actually be the first location where the data bytes will just get stored okay and gradually this will just you know uh, continue upwards I mean it, it'll just you know continue a decreasing order so since we want to store the 16-bit data we know that we would require two memory locations because each of these memory locations we can actually handle or rather store 8-bit uh, data only because the registers present in a external RAM chip used with the 8085 are only 8-bit registers. So, whenever we would, uh, you know, uh, declare this uh, uh, instruction over here, uh, like say we just, you know, straight away say push, uh, and then give the name B. Okay. Since we're talking about the BC register pair, like in the previous examples, in the same way, we would actually uh, mention the name of the register in the register pair, but that actually contains the higher byte. Okay. So here, 2F is the higher byte and it's present in the register B. So B represents the higher byte containing register. So by saying push B, it actually refers to the BC register pair. Okay? Now whenever this instruction gets executed, then what happens is that the data byte present in, that's the higher byte of course, present in the register B would first get stored in the higher memory location, that is 3FFE, okay? there it goes and later C would get stored in the memory location 3FFD so there it goes 03 okay now this way the data bytes present in a particular register pair are stored on the stack okay so if you just use this instruction once data bytes w in, in a register pair would just you know store themselves somewhat this way Alright, and this instruction is only limited to the register pair. So you always need to keep this in mind that the operands for this instruction that's push will always be the register pairs correspondingly. Okay, now the next instruction, okay, now the pop instruction. Okay, so what this pop instruction basically does is that, well, uh, yeah, we'll just basically write it down over here. It retrieves the data from the stack memory and was stores it in a specified register pair that was serves as the pop instructions uh, operand. Okay, as you can see over here. So, in a way, we can say that well, uh, the pop instruction performs just the opposite of what the push instruction 
does okay so if if we might well uh, you know continue with this example that we just exhibited of uh, for the push instruction so now that we stored the uh, data content of the bc register pair onto the stack memory okay we know that uh, well 3FFE and 3FFD were contains these uh, you know 0 3 and 2 of these uh, uh, data values now if we want to uh, well actually um, you know empty the stack and then take these data bytes back to where they came from okay that is to the bc register pair once again then what do we do okay we would just you know simply uh, put this instruction this way we have right over there uh, pop b okay now since we took the data from the bc uh, i mean the bc register pair so we're going to write here again pop b now what will happen is that the uh, stack okay would get empty so first of all the data byte is 0 3 from the stack location 3 double f d okay would go back and transfer itself into the register c so there you go if I just draw it over here so C once again will be loaded with the data byte 0 3 that's the lower order data byte okay and then the memory counter I mean I, I mean the uh, you know stack pointer would just get in incremented by one and it will just point to the three double F E uh, memory location currently and then again the uh, data byte present at three double F E that is two F would just transfer itself back to the register B where it just came from. So once again, the register B would be loaded from loaded by with the data byte. That's a higher order data byte. That's 2FH. Okay. So now that we see that due to the use of the pop B instruction, we see that the BC register pair where once again was stores the data that it just sent or loaded onto the stack. And now that the stack is empty. Okay. The stack is just back to where it just began from and all these locations that is 3 double fe and 3 double fd have all been you know emptied since the data has been moved okay from the stack memory now you should always keep in mind while using the push and the pop instructions that in case of the push instruction well as you just go on uh, storing the data bytes uh, i mean corresponding uh, uh, data from the register pairs concerned in uh, the corresponding locations of the stack memory then what happens is the stack pointer register is decremented by two each time you just store the data from a register pair so you can say that about the stack pointer okay or rather I might you know write it uh, in short as SP that's better so this is decremented by two okay this gets decremented by two each time the push instruction is executed in order to store the data bytes from a specified register pair onto the stack memory and on the other hand while using the pop instruction okay the stack pointer is incremented okay this is just incremented as you know you just retrieve back your data from the stack memory so this is just incremented by two each time the pop instruction is executed because it just you know empties the stack and due to the fact that the stack pointer I mean the uh, stack is declared at the possibly the highest available memory location to the user so you know it just goes somewhat this way okay and now due to the use of these instructions none of the flag bits are ever affected so you can see that well the flag bits will remain unaffected for push as well as for pop instructions okay so next we just go on to instruction number three that is oh and just one more thing I need to add over here is that under the push and the pop instructions okay uh, the PSW okay that's the uh, accumulator register and the flag register taken together also uh, acts as one of the operands okay so now we can just move on to instruction number three Okay, so we're here at the instruction number three, that is the SPHL instruction, okay? And what this instruction, now this instruction will, uh, is a refer to the copy HL register pair to the stack pointer, okay? Now, you can get an idea from its name, but what it actually does is that, well, it just copies the 16-bit data loaded in the HL register pair, and it just copies that to the stack pointer register. 
okay and now whenever you just uh, you know transfer any kind of 16 bit data to this tag pointer register now this tag is either well uh, declared at that particular uh, memory location or, or rather uh, what's the main thing you should actually keep in mind is that whenever you load any 16 bit data to the stack pointer register then the A085 would actually regard that particular data the 16 bit data that is as a memory location so likewise this has just been uh, you know um, mentioned over here that it just treats it as a memory address well as of some part of the stack okay the stack could either begin from that part or it could be well one of the uh, memory uh, uh, registers of the st entire stack memory of the uh, uh, 8085 system okay and now the uh, content of the register H is well regarded as the higher order uh, byte of the 16-bit memory address and uh, the content of the register L is well regarded as a lower order byte of the 16-bit uh, memory address so higher order byte okay and this is the lower order byte okay now it just makes a little bit more sense okay so kind of don't mind at that all right so now I'm just gonna uh, you know uh, illustrate an example over here let's say if the uh, HL register pair okay now in order to uh, use this instruction you need to load a 16-bit uh, data into the HL register pair first with the program okay now let's say the HL register pair well uh, it just contains the data this is I mean a 16-bit data of let's say 303FH uh, okay and the moment you just execute this instruction that is SPH and just write straight away since it has no operands okay so you don't need to take any kind of headache you just you know declare it straight away and once this instruction gets executed then you'll find that this particular 16-bit data in the HL register pair gets loaded onto the stack pointer register okay where 30 that's the data byte present in the H register is regarded as the higher order byte okay this is the higher byte and that in the register L is regarded as the lower order byte or you can also call it the lower byte so it just gets stored in somewhat this way so the stack pointer register whenever loaded with this particular 16 bit data so it just treats it as a uh, you know memory location so this is just treated as memory address alright so if you need to direct the stack pointer register to a particular uh, memory address of the stack um, I mean of the entire stack array then you should always keep in mind that this 16-bit data that you're supplying or loading into the stack pointer register should be a valid memory address okay that is very very important over here alright and apart from that the flag bits okay are also unaffected by this particular instruction that's the SPHL okay and now finally the instruction number four that is the exchange instruction okay the stack related exchange instruction is basically known as XT HL as you can see over here and like the SPHL command it doesn't have any operands as well so it's just well uh, defined as exchange HL with top of stack okay now question is what does this mean now it just well, exchanges the content of the register L okay uh, with a data in the stack location as pointed out by the stack point register and similarly it just exchanges with the I mean exchanges the data byte in the H register okay with the immediately next or subsequent stack location okay let's just give an example over here let's say the HL uh, register pair well let's say it just contains 16-bit uh, data okay of uh, A2 uh, okay A253 okay so now this is the HL register pair content now if uh, at the same moment let's say the stack locations okay let's say uh, 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 there are two stack locations let's say 2096 and uh, 2095 okay and well these two locations will contain uh, other data bytes let's say this contains was well, 67 and this contains well let's say f5 okay so now whenever 
but first let me just uh, tell you uh, these are the stacks okay all right now whenever we just write this uh, or rather execute this particular instruction if we just go for it straight away and and write this instruction over here xthl now once this instruction uh, gets executed then the exchange would take place okay so first of all let's just assume here that uh, before this instruction is executed the stack pointer will actually points to the memory location 2095 okay because that's the last filled uh, you know block of the stack okay so now that the uh, stack pointer will just points to the uh, memory location 2095 so as soon as okay as soon as the XTHL instruction gets executed then what happens is that uh, the memory location that the stack pointer basically now points to that is 2095 this particular memory locations content that is F5H is exchanged with the content of the L register so the content of 2095 goes to the register L and the content of the register L comes to the location 2095 so that uh, L would contain F5 okay and 2095 would just contain 53 okay and again the stack pointer register is incremented by one and next it just points to the 2096 location so now that the uh, 2095 is already dealt with this stack pointer uh, uh, register is just well incremented by one so it just now points to the 2096 memory location and once again another exchange would take place that's the 2096's data byte that is 67 would go to the register H and register H's data byte would come and store onto the 2096 location so that H will currently have a 67 while 2096 will have the data byte of A2 okay so this is what happens now you can see that well uh, compared to what the previous condition was so this was the previous condition okay and this is after the instruction is executed right now just noting the difference you'll see that well the entire content of the data has been exchanged with this tag locations concerned alright so this is what the XTHL instruction actually does and like the previous instructions so far discussed in this video the XTHL instruction also doesn't affect any of the flag bits and last but not the least it should always be mentioned that while well, all the instructions discussed here are just single byte instructions starting from XTHL, SPHL and also the push and the pop instructions respectively are all single byte instructions discussed here so far okay so that said we just come to the end of this tutorial video and we're gonna see you next in the forthcoming tutorial so stay tuned and keep watching bye bye